At the turn of the century, talk of hydrogen fuel cell powered cars were all the rage. Poised to be the more environmentally friendly option to inevitably replace the internal combustion engine and an alternative to battery electric vehicles. The hype for hydrogen fuel cells was growing, with 83% of all hydrogen research published between 2000 to 2019. Big Oil saw the technology as the next phase in their business, whilst George Bush's $1.3 billion hydrogen fuel initiative announcement stoked excitement around what a hydrogen economy could look like. The future was bright for hydrogen, with the HiNet project, a UK industrial decarbonisation project, estimating in 2004 that by 2015 there would be up to 1 million hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in Europe, whilst the Fuel Cell Commercialisation Conference of Japan predicted that there would be 5 million in Japan by 2020. Yet today, there are only 15,000 hydrogen vehicles within the US and an estimated 56,000 globally. Interested in buying a hydrogen car? Well, there are only two models available to the public, the Toyota Mirai and the Hyundai Nexo, neither of which are anything to really write home about. So what happened? With hydrogen promising an emission-free, lightweight, traditional driver's experience with the likes of quick refueling and long-distance travel, why is the hydrogen car not more popular? Was the hydrogen car not destined to take over the market? Or was it inevitable that this technology would never gain traction? If you want to see more content on energy, history and our world, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be alerted of future uploads. So, there are two ways of utilising hydrogen to power a car. The first way is by burning hydrogen in an internal combustion engine in a similar process to that of a petrol or diesel car. This method requires a designated hydrogen combustion engine and because of this, some petrol or diesel cars are actually being converted to run on hydrogen this way. But when you hear of people talk about a hydrogen powered car, they're often referring to a car powered by hydrogen fuel cell technology. This is how the two commercially available cars are powered and is the technology that is generally being developed to a greater extent. The General Motors Electrovan gets its electric power from hydrogen oxygen fuel cells. Unlike batteries, fuel cells will run the van as long as its tank has fuel, just like a gasoline engine. Electrovan can go 100 to 150 miles before its liquid hydrogen and oxygen tanks have to be filled. This technology isn't exactly new, having first been invented by Welsh physicist William Grove, who designed the first hydrogen fuel cell in 1842. Many companies have trialled the hydrogen fuel cell to power various vehicles. But how do fuel cells actually work? First off, it's important to clarify that hydrogen is not an energy source like oil or natural gas, but rather an energy carrier or a store like a battery. In a fuel cell, hydrogen is split into a proton and an electron at an anode using a catalyst. The protons move towards oxygen at the cathode, whilst the electrons are passed through a circuit generating an electric current. Eventually, the electrons reach the cathode where the molecules bond together to form water. As a result, only water vapour and some heat is produced, whilst no harmful emissions are released from the car's tailpipe. What's more, is that hydrogen has significantly more energy storage density than batteries, meaning that a hydrogen fuel cell powertrain will be lighter than that of an electric car. The advantage to this is that the hydrogen required to travel longer distances will not add much more weight to the vehicle when compared to a battery powered electric vehicle. Recharging only takes a few minutes, similar to a traditional hydrocarbon powered car, whilst hydrogen is the most abundant element on the planet meaning that we are not going to run out of it anytime soon. On the surface, hydrogen fuel cell technology seems too good to be true. And unfortunately, it is, as there's one problem that we're missing out. Whilst it is true that hydrogen is abundant, the problem with this statement is that hydrogen does not naturally occur in the atmosphere as hydrogen gas. Instead, hydrogen is found bound to elements that make up other molecules such as water, hydrocarbons and other organic matter. That's why the most common method of hydrogen gas production is by using methane, 
through a process called natural gas reforming. To do this, high temperature steam reacts with methane gas under a high pressure and in the presence of a catalyst to produce hydrogen, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. The carbon monoxide can then be mixed with the steam to produce more hydrogen and carbon dioxide. In the US, 95% of hydrogen is produced this way as it's the cheapest method of making the gas and hydrogen produced this way is referred to as brown hydrogen. Green hydrogen on the other hand is hydrogen that is made using renewable sources of energy. These sources of energy are used to pass an electric current through water to split the H2O molecules into hydrogen and oxygen in a process called electrolysis. Whilst this method doesn't require methane and has no direct carbon dioxide emissions, it is one of the most energy intensive methods to generate hydrogen and thus is currently not as economical. Unless the hydrogen is generated at the site of its use, which is the case with some hydrogen production and fueling stations, you actually have to distribute the hydrogen to refueling stations. As hydrogen takes up space due to its low density, when being transported, it has to be carried in high pressure containers or frozen in liquefied hydrogen tankers. Both of these methods are expensive as they are energy intensive to do. Freezing hydrogen in the process of cryogenic liquefaction is the most common method of preparing hydrogen for transportation for longer distances. This liquid hydrogen is then vaporized to a high pressure gas at the site of its dispensing. But the initial gas to liquid transformation process requires up to 30% of the energy stored within the actual hydrogen itself. In fact, the several processes required to prepare, transport and use the hydrogen in a fuel cell has an efficiency of around 25-35%, to 35%, whilst the equivalent efficiency rate for a battery operated vehicle is much higher. When you account for the vast transport and refilling infrastructure that has to be created to support hydrogen cars, many make the argument that there's little economic value to do so when this investment can be put towards improving the already growing electric grid for battery electric vehicles. Whilst this doesn't address the issues with battery electric vehicles that we've previously talked about, such as the currently high mineral demand needed and environmental issues associated with this, more governments do seem to be focusing on electric infrastructure above anything else for this reason. This current lack of infrastructure makes using a hydrogen car impractical for the user. Within the UK, there are only 11 public hydrogen fuel stations as of 2022, with Shell having closed down its hydrogen charging refueling stations due to low demand. In the US, vast areas do not have a single hydrogen refueling station, making it near impossible to travel via this method. The car market has chosen battery electric vehicles for now, but that's not to say hydrogen fuel cells will be unsuccessful. Quite the opposite actually, as hydrogen currently has many applications in industry and can be used to power areas that can't be electrified or stored for long durations allowing for use as backup power generation. The high energy storage density of hydrogen and low mass gives the gas advantageous properties within the transport industry. Whilst not common for everyday car use, fuel cell technology has the potential to power vehicles like buses and trucks that have a heavier load and travel for longer distances. Currently, there are over 5,000 fuel cell buses worldwide, with Germany, the UK, Italy and China all utilising them for public transport. Whilst companies like Volvo and Hyundai are developing long distance fuel cell trucks such as the Exion, which is already available for sale in some markets. Hydrogen cars may not be taking over the automobile market anytime soon. But as this technology develops, the full extent in which hydrogen fuel cell technology can disrupt the wider transport industry will likely become much more significant. Thank you for watching Olive Strike Productions. If you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos on a wide range of exciting topics covering energy, history and our world, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to be notified of future videos.